In this lecture, we focused most of our attention on air pollution because that is, by far, the most important way in which the energy system impacts human health today. I'm going to talk to you about some of the most important airborne pollutants, the so-called criteria air pollutants, as defined by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. We can divide the list into two categories, direct pollutants and secondary pollutants. Lead, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, sulfur dioxide, or SOx, and carbon monoxide are direct pollutants in that they are emitted directly from industrial activities, primarily the combustion of fossil fuels. Ozone is a secondary air pollutant. There is no significant direct emission of ozone. Instead, ozone is formed in the atmosphere when various other pollutants, most importantly NOx, react in the presence of sunlight. Particulate matter falls into both categories. Some particulate matter is emitted directly. Think of the visible smoke one sees from a diesel truck. But other particulate matter forms in the atmosphere from chemical reactions such as those involving NOx and SOx. Let's start with the direct pollutants. Lead used to be added to gasoline to improve combustion in automotive engines. It reduced pre-ignition of the air-fuel mixture called NOx. However, lead is a potent neurotoxin. Lead emissions from gasoline reduced the IQ of children growing up in polluted cities. This was no minor effect. Lead levels were high enough in the 1970s to reduce the average IQ of Americans who grew up then by five points. Lead pollution has been greatly reduced due to stringent regulations that banned its use in gasoline and restricted use elsewhere across the economy. The average lead levels in Americans' blood has gone down by more than a factor of 10. This is one of the many examples where environmental regulations have greatly improved human welfare and have had a positive economic benefit that greatly exceeded the direct cost of imposing the regulation. 